now in the previous video we have discussed about the big o notation now let us discuss about the big omega notation fine so we have we want to discuss about the big omega notation so what is a big omega notation it says if you have two functions the first function is assume it is fn and the second function is gn you can write it as c dot gn and this point is n naught right in the same way and this point is n now now if i can say that fn is always greater than or equal to c dot gn for all n greater than n naught where c is a constant then we can say that fn is omega of gn then we can say that fn is omega of gn so this is the big omega notation now what is this big omega notation if you see in this diagram you will find out in this notation gn is giving a lower bound to fn right here gn is giving a lower bound right in the case of order notation we have seen order notation gives the upper bound and we have seen the omega notation now omega notation is going to give you the lower bound right in in the case of algorithms whenever i am saying we are giving order notation that means for any program what is the maximum amount of time that program is going to take to execute right and when i am going to give the omega notation that means for any program what is the minimum amount of time that program is going to take to execute right in the same way in order notation we were interested in the tightest upper bound in the same way here we are interested in the tightest lower bound right we are interested in the tightest lower bound okay let us suppose we have let us say we have the function fn is n square plus 100n plus 1000 and the function gn is n right here the function gn is always less than equal to fn therefore i can say that fn is omega of gn or you can say omega of the function gn fine so fn is omega of the function gn that, that means it is giving the lower bound now one more interesting thing now let us say if we have fn is 100 n square plus 12 n plus 1000 and gn is only n square now for this case the highest power is n square in both the cases in the previous case we have already seen that uh, the big order notation is basically defined by the highest power here also this notation is defined by the highest power and here this was having the smaller power here it is having the highest power therefore i can say that fn is omega of j here also i can say that fn is omega of j okay now you are confused what you are saying you are saying sir you have already said that fn is order of gn now how can i be fn be omega of gn how can this happen and you can say this now what my answer will be see in both these cases this is giving the upper bound and this is giving the lower bound we have upper bound and the lower bound now in case of lower bound if we say this is fn and this is c dot gn now if i take c less than this 100 c less than 100 in this case for this gn then you can see fn is always greater than gn 
if the value of c is less than 100 then fn is always greater than gn but what if i say c is greater than 100 c is greater than 100 now if i say c is greater than 100 in that case you can clearly see and you can clearly say sir because c is greater than 100 therefore gn will be greater than fn therefore here in this case this order this notation is also valid because in this case if we assume that c is less than 100 then this notation is valid and this notation is also valid because here we can say c is less than 100 uh, is uh, greater than 100 therefore this notation is also valid right now if i say for any question or for any equation if big o notation is valid big omega notation is valid and both these are the highest upper bound and the lower bound both are same right what i am saying here the upper bound is the, the lower bound is omega of n square and here the upper bound is order of n square when the upper bound and lower bound the tightest upper, upper bound the tightest lower bound both are same then we can write it as theta of that function or theta of n square in this case Okay, that means here we have to define what is the formal definition of theta notation. Like I guess you you should get what I am saying now. What I am saying is I think you are understanding this. So what I am saying here is I am saying that if for a function you can give a upper bound, that means that is the order notation. If for a function you can give a lower bound, that is the omega notation. Fine. So I'll give you I'll take some examples then I can. I can make you understand this very easily fine so I hope this is done now let me clear this up and let me come to the theta notation don't worry I will take a lot of examples and by after the end of the examples it will be clear to you fine here let us define what is the theta notation now. so we have the big theta notation now what is this big theta notation it says that for any function let us suppose this is a function fn okay and I can say this is a function c1 dot gn and this is the function which is c2 dot gn okay and we have these two parts one is n0 and second one is n1 we have these two parts right now what this says what this big uh, theta notation says that for any function if you have the function fn now if you can say that fn is greater than c1 dot gn and fn less than equal to c2 dot gn that means the whether gn is greater than fn or whether gn is smaller than fn that is basically completely dependent on the value of c1 and c2 okay now if you remember the big o notation in that case i told you that in big o notation if we increase the value of c constant or if we decrease the value of constant this point will shift in any of these directions but that equation will also, uh, always be valid right but in this case see why that equation will be valid because n is tending to infinity but in this in this case if we can say that if we take a smaller value of constant c then gn is uh, less than fn if we take take a bigger the value of this constant c then gn is greater than fn right for all uh, you can say n is greater than n naught comma n1 right and you can say c1 and c2 are constants then we can say that fn is order of g right so this is what we know okay now if this equation is valid then we can say that fn is theta of g so not order of i guess in the last sentence i have said order of so here fn is theta of g n right now let me take some examples to clarify the concept okay now let us see this linear search program in this case of linear search program what is a linear search linear search is saying that if we want to search any data then we will search it by going to every index location 
that means we'll first go to index location 0 if data is matching then we'll return the address or index location then we'll go to index location 1 then we'll check at the index location 2 then we'll check at the index location 3 and so on that means we are going to check at every index location fine now in this program what you can see you can see if the number of data items in the array or you can say the size of the array is 0 then we are returning minus 1 that means we cannot search the data else we are performing a linear search in the linear search in, in any index location if we can find the data then we are turning the address of that location otherwise if we have searched the complete array but still we cannot find the data then again we are returning minus 1 and minus 1 is denoting that we cannot find the data otherwise I will, we are going to return the index locations fine now in any of these cases how many times these statements will be executed okay so this statement will be executed once right this statement will be executed once again this statement if we are inside this for loop then this statement will be executed once this will be executed how many times see here the number of times is actually dependent on the availability of the variable I am saying availability of the variable what does it mean it mean if we are lucky enough that we can find the data in the first search let us suppose we want to search 4 in this case right now if you want to search 4 in this array then whenever we hit this for loop and we check at the first index location then in the first index location we can easily find the data right so that is the best case that is there is a minimum amount of time the program is going to take so when the program is going to take the minimum amount of time there are two cases number one either the size of array is zero that means there is no elements in the array number two if we have the array and we are searching the data items and we can easily find the data item in the first index location then these two cases are going to lead me to the best case running time because in that case this program will do the minimum amount of work right so what what can be the maximum amount of work with this program is going to do so in that case we are going to execute this statement we are going to execute the for loop this for loop will run completely from here to here that means it will check all the index locations and then we cannot find the data and I, we can execute this statement or we execute the last statement in that case what will happen in that case we will execute all these statements fine then what will happen see in this case in the best case in the best case either this executed or this executed in both the cases it is going to ex execute one statement here and one statement here right or you can say two statements here which can be denoted by fn is equal to 3 which is still a constant time right then that means it is going to take best cases order of one time or best cases we can say omega of one time because best case is generally given by the omega notation fine now what is the worst case time this program is going to take what is the worst case so worst case is when this loop is going to be executed completely from the beginning till the end right so in the worst case we have to execute the loop completely in that case it is going to take order of n time fine now here the best case and worst case they are not same therefore if if only they are same then we can say theta notation but if they are not same then we cannot say give a theta notation here in any case right so this is a very simple example of a linear search which we are going to perform now we will take more examples after this now okay.